Hi and welcome to part two of the Digibase Colour Negative Developing Kit. In this video we're going to be going through the development process using a Jobo single reel 35mm tank and a roll of Agfa Vista 200. We're ready to develop our first colour negative film with the Digibase C41 kit. So the things that you will need, you'll need your chemicals mixed up in their respective bottles and in a water bath tempered to the appropriate temperature, in this case 25 degrees C. You'll need four funnels, one for each of the chemicals, something to sit your tank in which will contain tempered water to around 25-26 degrees C. A jug to contain tempered water for washing your film and pre-soaking. -pre An accurate digital thermometer it uh, doesn't have to be digital, but an accurate, good quality thermometer. A tank uh, to put your chosen film in, making sure uh, of all of your equipment that the reel is bone dry, because trying to load a film on a wet reel is an absolute nightmare. A pair of scissors and a film leader retriever will be handy to assist you in loading the film, but not essential, and a dark bag if you don't have a completely light tight room to allow you to load the film in. Um, also useful is a tablet or your smartphone to use an app which um, is called Devit. Now this particular app is free from the Android App Store. I'm assuming it's also available for iPhones as well. And it's absolutely fantastic. It's a dedicated timer app for film development and you can customize it to your own choice. It's a brilliant app, it's completely free. So get yourself on the App Store if you've got an Android or, um, or the iStore or whatever it's called if you've got an iPhone. Uh, I'm assuming it's on there as well. And, and get that, that's called DevIt, D-E-V hyphen it and as I say that's an app dedicated specifically for the film development you can of course just use an ordinary timer but you will have to watch that and be aware um, of the timing for agitations and such like whereas this kind of takes all the guesswork out of it for you so that's the equipment that you need we're going to go ahead we're going to get the film loaded into the drum and then we'll uh, we'll get right into the developing process. That's the film loaded onto the reel and sealed in the tank. You can now pour your chemicals into here and this has a funnel inside which stops light entering so you can do this in complete daylight. A little tip if you if the film leader has wound back into the canister and you don't have a film leader retriever you can buy um, can opener type devices that pop the ends of the can off. You can actually use an ordinary can opener, it's a little bit awkward. But quick and easy tip, if you're your hand with your hands in the dark bag or in a dark room, you can get a fingernail down this little portion of the, um, the film here, where the, uh, the, the leader comes out, and just pull that like so. It takes a little bit of practice first couple of times you do it, but if you pull it, you can actually just peel this Hopefully you can see this. You can just peel this away and pull out the centre reel with the film on, like so. Um, easy as that. So we're ready to go. I've uh, I've got my app here set up with um, the bleach and fix times. This will beep and tell me when I need to do what I need to do. So develop time is 13 minutes with agitation every 30 seconds. The bleach, six minutes, agitate every 30 seconds. The fixer, seven minutes, agitate every 30 seconds. Then there's a wash in between. And what I shall do there is an Ilford wash. I like to do a rinse between the bleach and the fix, but that's just a, that's just a, a quick rinse. Um, and then the stabiliser, which is 1 minute 30 seconds, agitating every 30 seconds. So I'll go ahead and uh, we'll pour out the tempering water. That's been soaking the film. And... Uh, Hit the button and start pouring our bleach. Or developer even. I'm jumping ahead of myself already. 
So, one inversion tapped to dislodge air bubbles. The timer, as you can see, is ticking away. And it will beep at me like that to let me know that it requires inversions every 30 seconds to remind me. So I'm going to go ahead and work through the entire development process, waiting for the beeps, performing an inversion, inversion and tapping the tank. And, uh, and we will come back when uh, it's time to decant the developer back into its bottle and pour in the bleach. Right, we're just coming up to 12 and a half minutes in. And what will happen as it comes up to the end of the timer, it will give me a different notification beep to let me know that it's time to start decanting the chemicals. Like so, because that is part of the actual development time. That's the end of the timer. That's the developer decanted back into its bottle. Now that's not strictly necessary, but I do like to give it a good tap just to make absolutely sure that as much of the chemical has gone back in as possible. So we we'll start the next process, which is the bleacher, pouring the whole 250 millilitres in there, and replacing the cap. And then we go through the same process again, but this time for six minutes, and then we move on to the fixer. So we'll see you shortly. And just like the developer, we are now getting to the end of the bleach stage and like the developer it will give me a notification five seconds before to start decanting the bleach back in. I always like to give it a last inversion before I start the decanting process. Uh, that's just kind of a habit that's, uh, that I've developed. I don't know why that is. But... And again, try and make sure you get as much of that out as possible. Now, the next step is a rinse. So using 25 degree water, which I've got sat here, I'm just going to pour that into there and then I'm going to give this some vigorous agitation and dump it down the sink. And the next thing we pour in is the fixer. I've got the stabiliser out there, so good job I spotted that. The next thing we pour in is the fixer, so we'll start the next process. And the fixer goes in. Same process as the developer and the bleach. Agitation every 30 seconds and this stays in for 7 minutes. Make sure when you're um, when you're decanting your chemicals back into their bottles that you use the funnel that is appropriate for each of the uh, chemicals. So I have one for the developer, one for the bleach, one for the fixer, and one for the stabilizer. And make sure that that goes into your sink ready for washing before uh, before the next uh, step so you don't accidentally use it and cross-contaminate your chemicals. Exactly like the other two processes we're now coming to the end of the fixer stage however you don't have to be in such a mad hurry to decant the fixer back into the bottle because you, there's no such thing as fixing a film too much. So obviously you don't not saying leave it in there, walk away for a couple of hours and uh, and you know go and do something else. But there's you know you don't need to panic about it. Uh, leaving it a few a few seconds extra 
is absolutely no problem whatsoever. So, as with the others, you decant them back into the bottle. You'll notice with each successive development of, uh, of each film that you do, that uh, each of the liquids will become, sorry about that, you'll notice that each of the liquid, liquids will become more discoloured. The bleach will start off clear and, and slowly turn pinkish colour typically because of the film emulsion. The bleach uh, will just get dirtier looking and the fixer will just start looking a bit more yellow, you know. Obviously that's a generalisation. It does depend as well on the chemical, I guess. Um, but having only so far used uh, the Digibase kits, that's my experience. So I'm going to put the lid back on that and pop that back in here. And before we go on to the stabiliser, what we need to do next is uh, is wash the film. Now we're going to do what's called the Ilford wash. The Ilford wash um, is a three bath wash where you pour in water of the appropriate temperature, you do five vigorous inversions, you dump it out, you pour in some more water, you do 10 vigorous inversions, you dump it out, you pour in some more water, you do 20 vigorous inversions and you dump it out. At this point we'll add the stabiliser. I think, I'm not 100% certain, but I think the Ilford wash was probably uh, developed for uh, when press photography was done in the field because it allows you to wash a film to archival quality without the long protractor drawn out running it underwater. We'll go on with the first tank of that one and you can be as vigorous as you like with this. It's just water and all you're doing is you're washing away any residual fixer that's stuck to the film and this wash applies the same whether it's black and white or colour film and then a final one with 20 inversions And then the very last step in the process, we add in the stabiliser for one and a half minutes. And like the two before it, we agitate that every 30 seconds. So we'll set that going and... So one and a half minutes every 30 seconds. Right, so we're coming up to the end of the stabiliser. And like the fixer, it's not going to hurt if it's in there a few extra seconds. Sorry about that again. I've got a habit of doing that to try and tap that as much of that down as possible. You'll notice that's very foamy. Uh, that's normal. And as you pour it back into its container, you'll see that has quite a bit of foam in it and this actually uh, protects the film and also helps it to dry streak free kind of like using photo flow or similar as uh, as you would with black and white film and this is the exciting bit this is where you can take everything off and take a look at your nicely developed negative film there you go. Now, I don't know how visible that's going to be, but hopefully you can see we've got some pictures on there. So what we do at this point is we take this into um, wherever you're drying it, the bathroom in my case, because it's, it's an ideal place. It's uh, make sure you pour any residual stabilizer back into the 
metal there. And bear in, remember as well that this stabiliser will also do for the next batch of chemicals that you make up. So you don't need to remake your stabiliser. So you need to recover as much of it as possible. Next thing we do is pop into the bathroom with that and hang that on the film clips and hang it up to dry. Taking the film, um, hopefully you can see this, you, uh, and your film clips, you could also, oh God. Uh, you can uh, use clothes pegs. Um, it'll do a perfectly good job, as long as it hangs straight. That's the most important thing, as long as uh, you're hanging it up and hanging it straight. And then uh, you don't need to wipe this down or anything of that nature. Just leave it there and leave that to dry. I'm going to try and bring this in a little bit closer. There we go. Hopefully you can see there. And you can see on this side of the negative strip, you've got the three colour segment showing that it's picked up all the colour dyes. And uh, after we've let this dry, the next step of course is scanning. I've just added this little bit here just to show you that you have, uh, as well as the clip that holds the film at the top, you need a clip that will hold it at the bottom. Now when you buy these clips, you'll typically buy them in pairs. One will be a standard one and one will be weighted. Your weighted one is the one that goes at the bottom, which helps to hold the clip, uh, helps to hold the negative strip straight, allowing it to dry straight so it doesn't curl, which can cause problems when you are scanning. So there you go.